Anything on my teeth? <laughs> no, no. All right, now we're gonna start. Hi, this is Kim Rosas from Put a Cup in It and welcome back to our channel. Today we're gonna be talking all about menstrual cup firmness. If you're new here, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button down below. Menstrual cup firmness is subjective and also pretty abstract. When we decided to publish a firmness chart and establish ratings for menstrual cup firmness, it was something we did with a lot of deliberation because everyone has their own idea of how to measure cup firmness and it's also subjective to the person doing the measuring. When we're talking about menstrual cup firmness, we're talking about the amount of resistance as you are squeezing and squishing the cup. As you squish the cup, it will either push down easily and very lazily return, or with a firmer cup, it'll be harder to squish to the touch, you can tell as you compare, and it will pop back with a lot more force. This is especially coming into play when you fold a menstrual cup to put it in. As you fold a cup that's softer, it doesn't give you a lot of fight, and when it opens, it's just a, a very lazy pop, a very lazy opening. When you fold and release a firmer cup, it is a lot more resistance to your hands, and when it opens, it opens with more of a pop and a bigger exertion of force. The cup that didn't give up much of a fight and didn't pop a lot is a cup we would consider soft. A cup that did give us a lot of resistance and popped open with force is a cup we would consider firm. Menstrual cups have varying levels of firmness, and this comes into play in multiple different ways for you, the wearer. It affects if the cup leaks for you or doesn't, if the cup is comfortable for you or it isn't, if the cup slips down during wear or doesn't, and if you can feel the cup as you're wearing it or you don't. The Put a Cup in It Firmness scores go from one to five, with one being the softest and five being the firmest. And in that middle range, the two, three, and four, those are the average cups, with four being a firm average, two being a soft average, and there are a few cups in the middle that kind of perfect three that are just that middle of the road, perfect average firmness. The Diva Cup is one of those cups and we rate a lot of the cups off the Diva Cup, giving it that middle point of that perfect firmness, which is really great for first time cup users and most people find it comfortable enough to wear, like a, like a softer cup, but firm enough that it opens inside. So it is the holy grail of firmness, but Everybody is different. There are some people that a three would be too firm for or too soft for, and then they wanna to go to those farther ends of the scale. As a reminder, if you want to look up firmnesses of cups and compare, we have them listed on our put a cup in it comparison chart and you can sort by firmness, lowest or highest, depending on how you wanna range them. And we also have a graphic on our website, we'll link in the video description with many of the leading brands, most of them, given a score, and you can compare those all together. And of course, there's one other thing that we have to mention when we're talking about cup firmness, and that's the material of the cup itself. Silicone menstrual cups are always going to feel the same outside and inside. Whether you're touching it with your hands or it's inside of your vagina, that firmness is about the same. TPE is a different material. It's also medical grade. Fewer cups are made with TPE, but it's often firmer in your hand, but as it warms, it kind of molds and softens. So while it may feel very firm on the outside, it often acts like a little bit of a softer cup when it's inside your body and it's warm to your body's temperature. There is one other type of material that cups are made from and it's natural rubber. The only cup that I've personally experienced made from natural rubber is the Keeper brand. This was a five on our firmness scale, super firm, but I don't know about uh, any other rubber brands that are made and how firm they are. So I can't really attest to how they wear in the body and how they feel because it's just not a cup I've used. You might have seen other websites or other people talk about something called a Shore score. A Shore score or a Shore rating is just how they rate the firmness of a menstrual cup. And this is done with a device called a durometer where it actually measures the thickness of these different materials like silicone and measures the shore rating, higher number being a firmer cup. 
but this doesn't give you the true overall impression of how firm or soft a cup is because every cup is designed completely differently. The rims affect how firm or soft the cup is. Let's say, for instance, you have a cup with a what we would call maybe a two on the body, but the rim is designed where it gives you more resistance and it acts more like a four. So there are all these things that when you overall feel and compare cups, that's something only you can do with your hands and by comparing it side by side, and this is what we do when we rate firmness scores, we go back and forth comparing all the different brands that we have, which is most of them, to get that overall feel and impression of the cup. It's not something a sure rating can establish for you. Now, this is also not a perfect way of rating firmness because we're going on all sides. We're rating the entire feeling and how we think it will open because that is really what matters is how the cup opens and feels in the body and the rim establishes most of that more so than the body. All of this is subjective. We know from our group and from comments and comments on our website and YouTube that people disagree with our ratings and that's fine because they have different experiences with the cups than we do, but we do have all the cups and we do try our best to rate them as subjectively as we can as we touch them, which includes rating brands that are the same but different sizes because that can also change. I told you this wasn't gonna be an easy thing to explain. <laughs> uh, so now let's talk about what this means to you as a menstrual cup wearer and user. First, we're gonna start with softer cups, cups that come in at a one or a two on our firmness scale. Softer cups are generally more comfortable for you to wear because they don't have the same amount of pressure inside the body as it's being worn most people wearing a softer cup don't feel the cup, meaning that it just doesn't exist inside them. The cons of a softer cup, mostly, if you're new especially, when you try to use a cup and insert it for the first time, you fold the cup and you put it in your body. And softer cups, when they're inside and opening in a small space, they just don't have that force to open and be open all the way. So depending on the cup size and your body and your anatomy, you may find that it's dented and it's leaking and you have a, a poor first experience with a menstrual cup. They often need assistance, and we talked about this in that leaking video we just published. We, they need assistance opening at the rim to seal and completely be leak-free. Another reason that softer cups aren't my favorite for newbies is that when you put it in for the first time, it often opens low inside the body and a softer cup is usually soft all the way around, and if you try to push this up, it will collapse as you're trying to push it up higher, whereas cups like Diva Cup, which is an average cup, or some of the firmer cups, you could just nudge the cup from the base and it would go right up. So now let's talk about the pros and cons of a firmer cup. Firmer cups are better for people who are new, in my personal opinion, because they want to open inside you when you put them in. So as it's in, when you let it go at the base and allow it to unfold as someone who's new, it really pops open and pushes against those walls, which is why one tip is to make sure it's high as you open it because it might, you might feel it a little bit as it opens on a firmer cup. It might give you a little scare the first time. Um, but it is generally going to be a, a quicker, easier, leak-free experience for someone who's new because you don't have to worry that it's open, it should probably, in most cases, just be open because it's firmer and it opens inside. Another reason I like firmer cups is for certain people who are more active and do a lot of exercising, they tend to stay in place against muscle movement. So if you're running or if you're doing yoga or if you're doing exercises where your muscles, your pelvic floor is pushing against the cup during those exercises, then you are stronger. It tends to crush or push the cup down and firmer cups are going to resist that more. Now, the cons of a firmer cup are the opposite of the pros of a softer cup. In many cases, for some people, you can feel the cup because it is kind of exerting a, a constant force or a pressure inside the body. And this means that you might just notice the cup more, or you may even feel some sort of pressure, like bladder pressure, or even just uh, a slower urine stream because it is against the bladder and the, uh, the urinary tract exiting your body. So if it's pushing against that tract, you might have a slower urine stream. This is the case with one of the cups I really like. It's not painful and it doesn't hurt me, but I do notice it and some people might be bothered by that. 
And in even rarer cases, a firmer cup might make having a bowel movement harder because it's pushing against the rectum. So as you look at this chart and see all the different ways the cup comes into play inside the body, it is either exerting some force against the bladder, the urinary tract, or the rectum, or all of the above, depending on how your body is shaped. So a softer cup or just a little bit more average cup than whatever firm cup you're trying might be more comfortable for you. To alleviate some of those cons on the side of the softer cup and the cons on the side of the firmer cup, while getting the pros of both, we like to recommend more average cups, especially if you're brand new to cups. This is why when people take our quiz, they often get very similar results. And this is because they don't know the specifics because they've never used a cup before, or they're kind of taking a stab at some of the questions and answering or leaving blank and this really just funnels you into this average category. And some of the cups that you're gonna see often recommended if you take our quiz is the Salt Soft, which is the average soft quiz result, and the Lena Cup, which is more of an average firm result, and several in those categories. If you go for or receive the quiz result, or you're just looking now and want something to start off with, Salt Soft is a really good cup to start with because it's average, but on a slightly softer than average scale. So it still has some resistance and it still has some pop, but it's soft enough that you shouldn't feel that pressure. It's gonna be more comfortable for anyone who's had that pressure before, or if you recommended this cup and you're new, you shouldn't ever feel that. And then the Lena cup or the salt cup, they're regular cups. It's a little firmer than average, but not by much. And it just gives a little more pop. So if you're more active, that might be your result. Um, but it's not so firm that it's just really hard to fold. If you can't fold the cup, like this is um, a cup from Selena Active. I have a very hard time folding this cup, especially with nails, because it's so firm. But with the Lena cup, it's a little bit easier. And of course, with the Salt Soft, it's quite easy to fold, but it might not open and pop as much as the Lena or some of the other average firms. We measure everything off firmness from the Diva cup because it's the cup that I believe and others believe that is the most perfect average firmness in terms of the body, the design. Everything just feels just right. It is a little long for most people, but it is that perfect firmness. Diva Cup is a three. The Lena or the Salt is a four, so it's on that average firm side. And the Soft Salt is on a two. If you're trying an average cup, let's say you tried one of the two, threes, or fours in that range, and you're getting some of the cons of um, what a firmer cup would cause, pressure or uh, noticing it, any discomfort in that way, you want to move to a softer cup. If you're trying an average cup and you feel the cons of a softer cup where it's going down, it's not staying in place, um, and you're having a hard time with it opening inside you, you wanna go to something a little firmer. So these are the ways that you can take previous cup experience and uh, use your knowledge of firmness to decide what's going to be best for you. It is definitely safer if you're brand new to cups to start with something in that two, three, or four range, going maybe towards the firmer average if you know you're more active, going towards the softer average if you know you're just a generally sensitive person, Softer cups tend to be more comfortable for people who have a lot of cramps and bladder issues. One more thing to mention about firmness is that over time, menstrual cups can soften. This is especially the case with medical grade silicone. So if you've started with a cup and a few years down the road, you find that it's not staying in place, it's slipping down, and it's just not working for you as well as it used to, one of the causes could be that it has softened over time and it's not fitting you the way it used to when you first started with the cup. It also could be that your body itself has changed. So it's really hard to pinpoint years down the road why a menstrual cup is not working the way it used to. And this is also the case of frequently boiling your cups. It can prematurely soften them more than just years and years and years of use. A menstrual cup, as a reminder, should last you about 10 years. Menstrual cup firmness is such an important aspect to the menstrual cup itself. Hopefully you're watching this video before you've run to Target to select your cup or gone online, before you take the quiz. Some of these things can really help you as you're picking your very first cup. And if you're an experienced cup user and you're watching this video, hopefully this information about firmness really helps you understand your cup better. Thanks so much for tuning in to Put a Cup in It. 
If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and leave us a comment. Thanks so much. Can I give me a kiss? You can make it loud enough so it's, uh, well. <laughs> I just fucked up all those numbers earlier, didn't I? <sighs> One more thing. That. <laughs> Collar is giving me shit. Menstrual cup. Bleh.